Hi, it's Katrina. From a secret hideout deep in the jungle to a lost Viking trade route, here are 12 archaeological discoveries made in the middle of nowhere. Number 12. Secret Nazi Hideout In 2015, archaeologists from the University of Buenos Aires announced the discovery of a hideout nestled in the thick vegetation of Argentina's Teyucuare National Park in the northeastern province of Misiones. Located close to the border with Paraguay, the site has long been associated with local legends of secretive German activity during World War II. The archaeological team went to investigate rumors of an abandoned bunker in person. They found fragments of a German-made plate at the site, along with five German coins minted between 1938 and 1941. The alleged bunker consists of a normal house with enough room for six to eight families and is surrounded by 10-foot thick walls and a hilltop watchtower. It's in an extremely remote location that would have been especially difficult to access back in the 1940s and even harder to survive in. This find indicated that Nazis were planning doomsday getaways pretty early on and in very remote locations. After the war ended, Germans were welcomed into Argentina, but before the end of the war, they didn't know that they would be accepted, so even before then, they worked with sympathizers to start planning their survival strategy in the country. Their post-war presence in the country numbered at least 5,000, according to records in Chile and Brazil that were uncovered in 2012, but most of them lived in cities and on ranches, rather than in secret hideaways. Vice reached out to Daniel Shavelson, the lead archaeologist on the dig that uncovered the hideout who said that it was built in isolation, not to protect it from bombs, but to be hidden in the middle of nowhere. It's covered by vegetation and the living conditions in this part of the jungle would have been extremely difficult. Think naked and afraid, but maybe not naked. Many people in Argentina do not like talking about Juan Perón and the Nazis who came there, but Shavelson says that to him, it's history, not politics. Number 11. Skellig Michael Monastery Located seven miles off County Kerry, Ireland, along the country's western coast, is the rugged, remote island of Skellig Michael. Known as one of the most impressive sites from the ancient Christian world, it boasts an ancient monastery that was reportedly founded in the 6th century. Why was it built so far away? In the past, it was believed that the more solitude, the closer to God. The monastery, which sits 600 feet above sea level, was first mentioned in an 8th century chronicle of Ireland's history called the Annals of Innisfallen. Starting in the year 824, Vikings repeatedly attacked the site. Then, sometime before 1044, a church dedicated to St. Michael the Archangel was built at Skellig. Also at the site are two oratories, a cemetery, crosses, and six stone beehive huts. The other side of the island features a 9th century hermitage filled with cells and platforms that were presumably used by monks seeking to dedicate themselves to their worship through isolation. At any given time, there were no more than 12 monks and one abbot living at Skellig, which was continuously inhabited for over 600 years until the late 12th or early 13th century. The island is open to tourists and is accessible via a one-hour boat ride, which often entails traveling through rough waters, so be ready! Just imagine hundreds of years ago, this place would have only been accessible during the summer, and it would have taken about 8 to 10 hours to reach the rock from the mainland. Number 10. Ancient Rock Art In a surprising new discovery that was recently announced, a team of archaeologists has discovered ancient rock art inside a remote, unmapped cave in Thailand's Sam Roy National Park. The ochre drawings, which consist of an antelope, a humanoid figure, and a family with interlocking arms, are estimated to be between 2,000 and 3,000 years old. The team, led by Kaniga Premjai, spent months searching the park, which is located about four hours south of Bangkok. Combing through the jungle was no easy task, requiring the help of a machete-wielding park ranger who cut paths through the dense foliage for the researchers. Navigating steep, rocky terrain to access the cave was just as challenging. They finally discovered the prehistoric rock art after searching 40 other caves with no luck. I screamed when we found the paintings, Kaniga said. After all the team went through to get to them, who can blame her? Noel Hidalgo Tan of Southeast Asia's Regional Center for Archaeology and Fine Arts told AFP that a group of hunter-gatherers probably made the drawings while camping in the mountains. There may be more undiscovered artwork throughout Thailand's caves, but between the country's understaffed Department of Fine Arts and the challenges of trekking through unexplored terrain, these discoveries are infrequent at best. Number 9. 
Baltic Sea Anomaly During the summer of 2011, a group of deep-sea explorers and treasure hunters called Ocean X discovered a bizarre disc-like formation on the Baltic Sea floor. Around 300 feet below the surface off the coast of Sweden, the team reported that they were looking for a shipwreck, and instead they came across this unusually shaped object. Instead of a shipwreck, it looks more like a spaceship. Team leader Peter Lindbergh asserted that the strange structure must have been built tens of thousands of years ago and suggested that perhaps this was the site of the lost city of Atlantis. OceanX team member Stefan Hogerborn even claimed that the crew's electrical equipment stopped working on the seabed within 656 feet of the anomaly. He is quoted by NDTV as saying anything electric out there, and the satellite phone as well, stopped working when we were above the object. And then we got away about 200 meters and it turned on again. And when we got back over the object, it didn't work. The 200 by 300 foot object is estimated to be about 10 to 13 feet thick. Next to the so-called spaceship, there is a 984-foot-long structure that looks like a runway, as well as a staircase alongside a gap in the ship that is said to lead to its interior. There is much debate as to whether this discovery is natural or man-made. Scientists from Stockholm University took samples from the area and discovered that the strange object and the surrounding features are probably leftovers from glacier processes that drag along the ocean floor creating the runway and leaving behind all kinds of formations. Many experts with strong opinions on the topic believe that the so-called Baltic Sea anomaly is nothing more than an oddly shaped glacial deposit that looks a lot more exciting than it really is. The OceanX team have created a documentary to chronicle their attempts to dive and study the object. They argue that their reputation should be respected since they have found several lost shipwrecks and are familiar with exploring the sea and using equipment. They argue that they need to explore the area further as they believe it could be the remains of a lost city or even a World War II structure left behind by the Nazis. While not necessarily a UFO, this thing continues to spark debate as to what it might be or where it came from. What do you think it is? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. Eagle Lake Tramway Deep in the remote forest of northern Maine, there is a collection of old rusty machinery parts, along with two decaying locomotives. These objects, which look like the contents of a junkyard at first glance, were far more impressive during their former glory, when they made up what was called the Eagle Lake Tramway. Built in 1902, when northern Maine was a major hub of the logging industry, the steam-powered tramway transported timber over a 3,000-foot section of land between Eagle Lake and Chamberlain Lake. Steel trucks attached to a 6,000-foot cable loop carried the logs at a snail's pace of 3 miles per hour. As painstakingly slow as this seems, the tramway was far more efficient than the oxen who transported logs between the lakes before it was built. But it wasn't used for very long. Technology kept advancing, and in 1907, the invention of the Lombard steam log hauler rendered the tramway obsolete. It was taken out of service, and in 1927, the Eagle Lake terminus became part of the Eagle Lake and West Branch Railroad, which operated until 1933 before being shut down leaving behind the two locomotives at the site today. What's left of the tramway is deteriorating as parts collapse and fall into the ground. Regardless of its state, the site is considered historically valuable and is on the National Register of Historic Places. Have you ever been here? Have you ever been to Maine? Let me know in the comments below. Number 7. Nemrut Mountain Tomb Situated atop the 7,000-foot peak of Mount Nemrut in Turkey's Taurus mountain range are the ancient ruins of a tomb sanctuary built in 62 BC for King Antiochus I Theos, ruler of the Greco-Iranian kingdom of Commagene. Antiochus created a cult of mixed Greek and Zoroastrian elements designed to worship him after his death. He wanted his tomb built in a high, remote place near the gods, symbolizing how he saw himself among their ranks. The site features a combination of Greek and Persian influences and is filled with huge statues ranging in height from 26 to 30 feet. There is a statue of the king himself, along with two lions, two eagles, and various gods, including Zeus, Hercules, and Apollo. Their heads were broken off at some point and now scatter the site but the statues are not completely destroyed, and some of the headless bodies even still contain their original inscriptions. Discovered by German engineer Karl Sester in 1881, the royal tomb at Nemrut is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a popular tourist destination. But the burial site of Antiochus himself was never found, 
despite numerous excavations over the years. Number 6. Mucholapka. In rural Poland near the Czech border sits a huge concrete decagonal structure nicknamed Hitler's Stonehenge and Mucholapka. Researchers know that the Nazis built it during World War II when the area was part of Germany, but they are unsure what it was used or meant for. Theories abound among professional scholars and armchair experts alike, with some speculating that the construction was somehow intended as a missile launch site. Others believe it could be the unfinished base of a water cooling tower, while more imaginative individuals have suggested that it served as a launch pad for flying saucers or a time travel machine. Some say that Hitler didn't die, rather he simply boarded an acorn-shaped machine at the site and traveled to another dimension. Running below the structure are a series of secret underground tunnels that were built between 1943 and 1945 as a part of a secret project called Ries. While it's easy to scoff at the more far-flung theories behind this place, the uncomfortable truth is that even the experts don't know what it is, or was. Perhaps someday they'll figure it out. Number 5. Weingut 1 In 1944 and 1945, the Third Reich attempted to construct a network of underground factory bunkers that they hoped to protect from Allied bombing campaigns. One of the structures, a reinforced concrete barrel vault, was built in the remote Moldorfer Hart Forest outside Munich in southeastern Germany. Codenamed Weingut 1, the bunker was meant to house a nine-story production facility for building jet engines. Once it was built, the plan was to cover it with soil and vegetation. By the time construction began, however, the Allied forces had already seized control of German airspace, and it was pretty evident that Weingut 1 would never be finished fast enough to help the Nazis during a losing war. But the project proceeded anyway, with a six-month deadline. Over 8,500 of the 10,000 workers were forced laborers, and over 3,000 of them died from starvation, brutal treatment, and being worked to death. Thanks to the structure's massive size, American military intelligence captured aerial images of it. They chose not to bomb the site, perhaps because they knew about the nearby labor camp, or maybe because they knew the project would never come to fruition by the time the war ended. Only seven of the 12 planned bunker sections were ever built, and in May 1945, the U.S. Army took over the site. Two years later, they demolished all but one section, which still stands today. Number 4. Humberstone Saltpeter, known as white gold, was in huge demand during the 19th and part of the 20th centuries. Mined from the nitrate-rich layer of desert called Caliche, it was used as fertilizer and came in handy for feeding Europe's burgeoning populations. Throughout that time period, most of the world's saltpeter supply came from the former Chilean mining town of Humberstone, located in the Atacama Desert. Because the country's economy relied heavily on its saltpeter exports, Chile had dozens of mining towns. Founded as La Palma in 1872, Humberstone was home to around 3,500 people at its peak. It was situated extremely far from civilization, including other mining towns. Our contact with the rest of the country and even with the surrounding region was minimal, former resident Osiel Rodriguez told the BBC in a 2015 interview. The Chilean saltpeter industry collapsed in the early 20th century due to warfare and the development of other fertilizers. Humberstone was slowly abandoned over the course of 30 years, with its final residents leaving in 1961. Its ruins still stand today as a testament to the difficult conditions of the work that went on there, as well as the once booming industry. The site, which is now a tourist destination, still contains workers' houses, machinery, warehouses, theater, church, and a hotel. Number 3. Tynem Village Known as Dorset's Lost Village, Tynem is located near the shoreline in the sparsely populated countryside of southern England. The former civil parish is situated in a secluded valley, where people have found evidence of human occupation dating back to the Roman era and the Iron Age. The area was inhabited until 1943, when the War Office of the British government evacuated 225 residents so the military could use the land as a firing range and training ground. Displaced residents were promised the opportunity to eventually return, but in the end were not allowed back. The military remained on the land after World War II ended and still uses it as a training ground today. But for the most part, Tynum is a ghost town. It was open to visitors starting in 1975. Many of its original buildings still stand, including the Church of St. Mary, a limestone structure dating back to the 13th century, some houses, and a schoolhouse. Others have been destroyed or demolished. 
While the forced relocation of Tyneham's residents is heartbreaking and perhaps infuriating, one good thing came of the diminished human presence in the area, which became a haven for wildlife despite the military scrap littering the territory. Number 2 ancient Viking trade route. In April of this year, archaeologists from the Glacier Archaeology Program announced the 2011 discovery of a remote mountain pass in north-central Norway that the Vikings used thousands of years ago. The melting Lendbreen Glacier revealed a treasure trove of artifacts including tunics, woolen mittens, arrows, shoes, snowshoes made for horses, antlers, bones, and animal dung. The team, who detailed their findings in the journal Antiquity, theorized that the pass was part of a much bigger network of trading routes. It constitutes the first site of its type discovered in Europe, and now researchers know that ancient people used the mountains more often than previously thought. Norway's oldest garment, known as the Lendbrain tunic, was also found at the site as a crumpled piece of cloth. At 1,700 years old, it's one of the few surviving garments from its time period ever found in Europe. Experts painstakingly restored the tunic while trying to get to the bottom of its mysteries, including who wore it and why they left it behind. They determined that the tunic was made sometime between 230 and 390 AD and that it's made from sheep's wool. The garment bears evidence of patches and repair work, indicating that its wearer used it for quite a long time and appears to be made for a slender boy or a young man. The materials and patterns indicate that the tunic was time-consuming to make, but of a standard Iron Age style. Hundreds of artifacts emerge every summer, according to Glacier Hub, and similar objects are likely to surface in the near future, with climate change melting glaciers at unprecedented speeds. Number 1. Earliest Arrivals to Indonesia This summer, archaeologists announced the discovery of artifacts on the small Indonesian island of Obi, serving as evidence of some of the earliest human arrivals. Included among the objects are stone tools, animal bones, and decorative beads dating back up to 17,500 years. There were 11,700-year-old stone axes, as well as fragments of clamshell axes from 14,000 years ago. Occupying a 965-square-mile area, Obi is a rugged and densely forested volcanic island and may have acted as a stepping stone for the aborigines on their way to Australia. Archaeologists believe it may contain even older evidence of human habitation than what's been found so far, perhaps dating as far back as 50,000 years ago, when Aboriginal people migrated to the supercontinent of Sahul, which was comprised of mainland Australia and what are now the islands of Tasmania, New Guinea, Ceram, and a few others. For now, however, the region remains largely unexplored, with the most recently discovered artifacts reflecting human occupation before the last ice age. Experts believe Obi was abandoned around 8,000 years ago as the climate warmed, possibly because managing the thickening, dense foliage of the jungle became difficult. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite archaeological site? Where would you like to visit? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! We'd love to have you! See you next time! Bye!